God be blessed and all of his people. And everybody said, amen. Glad to see all of you. Praise God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. Thank you for all you do, and thank you for your presence on today. If there were nobody uh, in the cyber audience, I would be so distressed. Hello. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So don't ever think I think, take you for granted. I always appreciate you and appreciate your presence. And this week, we got a very, very exciting, very, very challenging lesson. We're starting in a new quarter, and we're going to be looking at none other than Jesus Christ himself and the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going all the way back to where the gospel was preached the very first time. Amen. And we praise God for allowing us to pull back the curtain and see how the gospel of Jesus Christ got started. Amen. So with that in mind, let us uh, have a word of prayer, and then we'll move forward into a very, very exciting, very, very challenging lesson on today. Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise you, we adore you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a glimpse of how the gospel of Jesus Christ started to be preached from the outset when you yourself walked on the earth and preached the gospel for the first time. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, now, I was just a privilege to just look at the, the uh, gospel when it was first presented. Amen. And we're going to start off in the book of Luke. And who, who knows what, at least one or two things about the book of Luke. Number one, it is one of the gospels. There are four of them. And out of all four, it is the very shortest one. Very shortest one. And not only is it the shortest one, it was the first one that was written. Amen. I know the chronological order, uh, Matthew and then Mark. But uh, it was the first one written. Everything that's written in the book of Mark is repeated in the other three Gospels all the way up to roughly about 85 to 95 percent of it. So they had the Gospel of Mark as an outline. Amen. When the other ones were written. Amen. They patterned after Mark. So having said that, we're going to look at this. And bear in mind, we're, we're going to what? Pull back the curtains and see how the Gospel got started preaching. Uh, how it started preaching from the very, very outset. And our lesson is coming from the book of Mark, uh, chapter 1, and our lesson starts at chapter, verse 4, but we're going to look at 1, 2, and 3. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time there. We'll just uh, touch on a couple of things here. And I wanted you to see that. Number one, this starts off like the book of Genesis. Genesis starts up in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Amen. Look how this starts off. It says, the beginning of the gospel, and then it says about, that's who it's about, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, we know the gospel is the what? It's the good news about Jesus Christ. Why is it so good? There's a reason why. Because it's the only thing that you can hear and read that tells you how you can get saved. You can read all the literature in the world. None of it tells you how you can get saved, except what? The gospel of Jesus Christ. John uh, 9, 10, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that he was raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Only writing tells you how to be saved is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is how it got started. Now, look what they say. The Son of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he doesn't leave it up to your imagination. He said Jesus was the Son of God. Amen. And we need to believe that. 
And then a couple other things here. Verse 2 is uh, basically drawn from Malachi, uh, third chapter, first verse. Look what it says. As it is written in the prophets. He's talking about Isaiah, but actually this verse is a culmination of Isaiah as well as Malachi chapter 3, verses 1. Behold, I send my messenger before your face. Who is the messenger? Come on. John the Baptist. Hello. Amen. He is the forerunner of Christ. He introduces Christ. He doesn't start with Christ. He starts with the forerunner. Now, back in those days, uh, when a king would come to town, they would send an entourage. Or, or, or a horseman up ahead, and he would ride through town. The king is coming. The king is coming. And they would quit what they were doing, go out and, and what? Repair the roads and make the rough places smooth, crooked places straight, and make sure that the king had what? Smooth interest into the town. And that's what they're talking about when they say, which shall prepare thy way before thee, fixing the roads and preparing them so the king would have a comfortable interest. Verse 3, now this is taken from Isaiah chapter 40 and what? Verse 3, amen. And Isaiah was what? The most popular writing, and so they reference, uh, excuse me, uh, Isaiah, yeah, Isaiah, so they reference him, a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now that was how they would go out and repair the road, and what? To receive the king. And what that really means is, they're not talking about to us about repairing the roads. They're talking to us about preparing our hearts to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a parallel there. So make sure that you understand that. Amen. Now, having said that, having said that, we're into verse 4 here, and I did want to touch on a few things there. Now that we know that the forerunner, and another name for a forerunner is a heralder. Heralder. He would go before and announce before the what? King got there that he was on the way. Amen. Amen. Now, John did baptize, and they're talking about John the Baptist, did baptize in the wilderness and preached what? The baptism of repentance for the what? Remission of sin. Now, at the baptizing is what? Baptizo means to what? Submerge. He baptized. Uh, in the wilderness, he appeared. He appeared. And that's why Mark wrote and referenced the book of Isaiah. And then shortly, what? John the Baptist appears on the scene. He's baptizing. And he's saying here, and that word preach means proclaiming. Amen. And he preached the baptism of what? Repentance. Now, there were some other uh, cults, that's what I call them, because they were false cults, Judaism, and so forth. They baptized also, but this one was different. It was a baptism of repentance. Now, that's what you and I do. That's how we repent of our sin. And repent means to what? Change of heart, change of mind based on what? Newfound information. Amen. And if they repented or uh, confess their sins, then what would happen? Then what? Their sins would be forgiven. Now, that was the message that John the Baptist preached, and when Jesus came along in the following, uh, in this same chapter, he said what? Repent and be baptized, amen. Repent of your sins and receive the gospel. They preach the same identical message, and that's how 
the preaching, the what? Proclaiming of God's word first started. Okay, now here it is, and he says, if you do that, you will what? Receive forgiveness of your sin. Amen. Now, that's what we all needed, forgiveness, and that's what they needed. We'll see it in the very, very next verse. They came from everywhere and what? Confessed their sin and they repented. But before we go there, what is another go-to verse for repenting to receive forgiveness? Don't forget this. 1 John 1, 9. If thou will what? Confess thy sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. That, base, that verse is based on the same principle as we have here from the gospel of Jesus Christ. First, God started. So always remember that. The worst thing you can do is what? Sin and do not, what? Confess your sin. Because what? You're shutting yourself off from receiving God's forgiveness. Now, now, as this continues on, he goes to verse 5 and he tells us how many people came out to John. Look what he says. And there went out unto him, not some, all the land of Judea, and they of what? Jerusalem. Jerusalem was where? In Judea. It was a city in Judea. Now, while we're here, let's just cover this. Palestine had five provinces. Amen. Judah was one of them. Who were the other two? Hello? Hello? Judah was one, and then they had Samaria, and then they had Galilee. Those were the three provinces that made up what? Palestine. Okay, so now we're aware of that. And when all, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan. Doing what? Confessing. So they were guilty of sin. Amen? Amen? And understand this. You're just as guilty as they are as well as myself. So make sure you keep confession in your vocabulary and for confess your sins before God. You don't know all your sins. None of us do. Sometimes we sin and we don't even know it. But ask God to forgive you of all your sins. What? Known and what? Unknown. Amen. And that way you can start the slate off clean and start all over again. Amen. If thou wilt confess thy sin, God is faithful to what? Forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Now, having said that, how many miles was it from Jerusalem to the Jordan River? 20 miles. Hello. And from Jerusalem, it was all downhill, the jagged cliffs and everything. It was harder than that going back. Because Jerusalem, what? Elevation, 400 feet above sea level. The air would get thin going back up to the sea. These people here put forward an effort to get to John. What am I telling you? Make sure you put an effort to get to Jesus. Amen. In this case, it was John the Baptist, but make sure you put forth an effort to come to Jesus. All we have to do is come to church, amen, and we can get saved there. Now, having said that, 20 miles, and that's what? They weren't riding on your ride either. Hello, amen. And they went to Jerusalem and were baptized. That word baptizo, totally submerged, amen. And uh, the River Jordan confessed their sins, admitted that they had what? Sin. Now, that's a good thing because the Bible already said, well, all have sinned and fall short of the glory. But you know what that word confess means? It means to say 
the same thing that God said. In other words, agree with God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's confessing your sins. Amen. Amen. Now, look at verse 6. And John was clothed in what? Camel's hair. What was his clothes made out of? Camel's hair. <laughs> Amen. And how did he hold all the stuff together? He had a leather belt uh, around his waist. And look, this verse is reminiscent of somebody. Who is that somebody that they're trying to bring to their memory? Hello? 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 None other than what? The prophet Isaiah. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, the prophet. Uh, it wasn't Isaiah. <laughs> That's right, it'll come to me in a minute. Uh, it was the prophet, uh, the Tishabite. No, my, my memory bank is failing me right now. But that's all right. This was the prophet that they were concerned. Elijah. Hello. I don't know why my, my memory bank was betraying me. <laughs> but he was talking about the prophet Elijah. And remember, Elijah, and, and I said Elijah, uh, excuse me, Isaiah before, I meant Elijah. That's what I meant. Elijah was one of the people that never what? That never died. Always remember that. Always remember that. Will you see Isaiah again? Oh, yeah, you will. In the book of Revelation. And, and who was the other one that supposedly died, but we don't know where he was buried at? They don't know where his grave is, even to the day. Who was that? Moses. Are we done with Moses and Elijah? Oh, no. You go over there in the book of Revelation, they're going to come down from heaven. Down from heaven. They're going to get killed in the streets and lay in the street for three, three days. And the people are going to rejoice because they think they done killed them. And after three days, they're going to stand up and the people are going to be in the utmost fear, and they're going to be drawn back up to heaven. Hello. Hello. There's a reason Isaiah, I don't know why I want to keep saying Isaiah. There's a reason Elijah was drawn up with a whirlwind. He never dies. Amen? And there's a reason, even though they said Moses was not dim, his eyes were not dim, God did what? Took him. But then it also said, nobody knows where his grave is, even to the day. Amen? Please understand that. And why did I say that? I want you to understand, life after death is real. It's real. It's real. Amen? And they got judgment saying that everyone, will give account for his life, whether good. Everybody shall appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that they, they may receive the thing done in their body. According to that they have done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And I want to encourage you, don't ignore the Bible, because the stuff that's in there is true. Every bit of it is going to come to pass. You are on your proving ground as well as I am. And what you do here is your ticket to get up there. Hello? Hey, Amen. Show some evidence. Now, 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 moving on. He's still talking about John the Baptist. He gives us his dietary intake. <laughs> told, us, told us what he wear to remind you of Elijah. Amen. And then he told you his diet. His diet and Elijah's diet were one and the same. They lived out where? In the wilderness. And this was their diet intake in the wilderness. And, and, and you know what locusts are? Grasshoppers. <laughs> I know some of you don't think about eating grasshoppers, but I can tell you one thing, positive thing. 
They were dried. Amen? And so that meant they baked them in the sun, just like they, they dried fish out because they don't have the refrigeration unit that we have today. And of course, you know what, local honey. And that was to remind you of Elijah. Now, 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 look at verse 7. He gives you, he gives you an idea of what John preached. Look, look what John preached. John preached, this is his sermon right here. Uh, saying and preached, saying, there cometh one mightier than uh, then I, I after me, then I after me, uh, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. In other words, the word I want you to focus on here is superior. Hello. Jesus was superior to John in every way. And not only was he superior to John, he was superior to any other. What? Before, doing, or what? After, none uh, greater than Jesus. Amen. But John the Baptist, what did he say about him? None greater than John. Amen. I'm born among women. None greater than John. But what? Jesus was still superior to John. And that's what Luke proves as he goes, excuse me, that's what uh, Mark proves as he goes through the book of Mark. We're just in chapter 1, and he's proving that Jesus is far superior than anyone, anything, anytime, any place. He's superior. Amen. And he says, I'm not even worthy to be a slave and unloose the latches of his shoes. That's how much far, further... Uh, Superior Jesus was over them, and what? As well as us, he was the Savior of the world. Amen. And he himself was God. Amen. A menial task. John says what? I'm not even worthy to do that. Now, verse 8. Indeed, I baptize. Now, look, no. Know what his baptism was. He did it with what? Water. Baptized with water, but he shall baptize with what? Holy Ghost, one external on the outside. And it's often said about water baptism, it's an outward evidence of an inward change. In other words, it was a public announcement that you were identifying yourself with Jesus when you got baptized. The old man, down below the water, coming up what? A new creature in Christ Jesus. What, what, what does 1 Corinthians 5, 17 say? If any man be in Christ, what is he? A new creation. Behold, old things have what? Passed away, and behold, all things you got a new nature now. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Not external like water, but internal where nobody can see. You look the same, hello? But hopefully you won't act the same. Why? Because you've got God on the inside dwelling in you now. Amen. That was his message. Amen. That's what he's telling you. Now, 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 it changes a little bit here. He talked about John. Now he's going to talk about Jesus, the one that's mightier. Here he comes in verse 9. He appears on the scene just like John appeared on the scene in verse 4. And it came to pass in those days that who? That Jesus came from Nazareth. No, no, no. All the other people were coming from where? Judea and Jerusalem and the surrounded uh, areas there. Jesus came from Nazareth. 
What was, what was the climate in Nazareth? What did they say about the city of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And it just goes to show you, yes, some good things can come out. That's why our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, came out of Nazareth. Amen. And he was also baptized where? Well, in the river Jordan. And did he have a problem with that? They had a problem with that. Because, because one, Jesus didn't have any sin whatsoever. None, none, none. And the question was, well, 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 if he didn't have no sin, why is he being baptized by a sinner? Hello, who was John? And John didn't, John wasn't perfect. We're not going to say that, you know. But what did Jesus tell him? He said, he says, suffer it to be so, for it fulfilleth us to fulfill all righteousness. What did he mean by that? He said that in Matthew 3, 14 and 15. And John had told him, he said, look, I have need to be baptized of you and thou comest to me. And John was baffled by that because he knew that Jesus, what? Had never sinned. He said, suffer it to be so, for it becometh us to fulfill what? All unrighteousness. Now I'm going to give you the answer to all of that. Jesus had to identify with sinful humanity. Why? Because he was going to be the lamb that was slain for what? Sinful humanity. So he had to identify with us, as sinful as we were. And this is where the substitution took place. And this is the birth, 2 Corinthians 5.21. And look what it says. It says, for he, God, made him sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay. You understand that? You did the sinning, and Jesus paid the price. God made him sin. In other words, God made him pay for all the sin that you and I and everybody else committed. Jesus had to pay for them. He had to pay for the price for all of the sins that we might be counted what? Righteous. Hello, do you understand that now? That was to fulfill all righteousness so that God could declare us righteous. He took our ledger and our sin and put it on him and took what he had, which was no sin, and put it on our account. Jot that down and post that. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he made him sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him or be cause of him because he paid the sin debt with the shedding of his blood on Calvary. That's what he was talking about. Let it be so. I know I probably should baptize you, John, but look, let, go ahead and you baptize me. Some things got to be done that you don't know about. Hello. Amen. And look, look, look what happened after that. This word is used numerous times in Luke, and that word is straightway. Straightway, that means immediately, at once. Sooner than right now. At once. Amen. Suddenly. Coming out of the water. Now I told you Jesus was baptized what? By total emergence. His whole body underneath the water. He couldn't come out of the water if he never went in the water. Hello. So straightway, immediately coming up out of the water. He saw the what? Heavens open, spirit like a what? Dove descending on him. 
And in the next word, it says what? And a voice. Three things that distinguishes his baptism from any other baptism. Nobody seen the heavens what? Tore wide open. Nobody ever seen the what? Spirit of God come down like a dove and light on him. And God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. Amen. And there are a couple other times that God spoke from heaven. At Mount of Transfiguration, he spoke from heaven. And also at uh, his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And both of those accounts, uh, John 9, 7, excuse me, Mark 9, 7, that's the transfiguration, he spoke from heaven. And then John 12, 28, tri a triumphal uh, entry into Jerusalem. But that was his what? His approval of Jesus. Jesus had raised anybody from the dead, had healed anybody at all. Hello. He hadn't even what? Raised from the dead yet. But God approved of him. How did he approve of him? By giving him the Holy Ghost. Amen. Or the Holy Spirit. And he was successful in his ministry because of the Holy Ghost. Now, Deke, why are you telling us all of that? Because I'm trying to get you to understand that you can be successful in your ministry if God gives you the Holy Ghost. Hello? That was his anointing. Amen? That was his approval. That was his confirmation. That was his validation that came from God. Amen. We got our approval, our validation that comes from God when we confess our sins. Hello. And God gives us his Holy Spirit and puts it on the inside of us. We can be successful in ministry. Some, some of us, uh, I'm not sure if I could do it. Uh, we'll, we'll get somebody else and I don't feel worthy. And, uh, hello. Once God endows you with his spirit, you are successful even though you haven't did anything yet. God is trusting you to fulfill your mission with his help. Hello. With his help. And if you go down here, a couple of verses here, it says, and the angels ministered unto him. That's the help that he needed. Now, God's not giving us an assignment to the magnitude of Jesus. Our assignment is not that great. But we have to die for somebody. But whatever ministry that God gives you, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you gives you the courage and everything that you need to be successful. Hello? That's the message that I want you to understand from this lesson. Amen? That's why I jumped a couple of verses to get you to see the whole picture. If Jesus was successful, so can so you and I be successful. Learn how to count on God and trust God. Amen? He's got the power. He's got the anointing that we need in order to do the work, the assignment that he's given us. Amen? Come on now. Talk to me if you can. All right. Now that I've said that, let's, let's look at it again. The three things here that distinguished Jesus was the three things that happened. The heavens opened up, the Holy Ghost lit on him, and God spoke from heaven and approved him, validated him. Amen. His sonship, he was the son of God, that was validated, and he was approved by God. This is my beloved son, who I'm what? Well pleased. Guess what? God is well pleased with every one of us. Amen.
When he puts his spirit on the inside of us, it's not up for grabs, not up for questions. What? God is pleased with us. He approves of us. Amen? Amen. Always keep that in mind. And that word again, look what it says in verse 12. 12. And immediately, that's the same word that straightway means. Right now. Sooner than right now. Suddenly. Out of nowhere. Hello. Look what it is. Jesus took, and immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Now, 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 it driveth. That, that's just like uh, exorcism when Jesus, what, cast out demons. And it was just whew, right now. That was his explosion. Jesus took the offensive. He didn't wait and try to get out of the, the temptations. He, he what? went right straight into it. Can I tell you something? If you're going to have any success in your ministry at all, can I tell you something? You're going to have problems with the devil. Hello. I mean, there ain't no maybe. It's only a matter of when. When. And if he attacked Jesus, certainly going to attack you. Hello. Look what it says. Look what it, and immediately the spirit driveth him in what? into the wilderness. Now, that's Satan's domain. Dark, dreary. Hello. Satan's domain. Amen. And look what happened. There. And it was there. Now, understand this. He was baptized by John, but he was tempted by the devil. Now, does it sound like the devil is a real energy right here? Does it sound like he's real? Don't forget, Jesus is the one that introduced you to him. Don't forget that. And if he dealt with Jesus, he's certainly going to deal with you. Hello. Hello. Please understand that. The devil has got a lot of people snowball, and they think he's not real. And he just loves that. Because all of the things that happen to you, the trials, the tribulations, the good, the bad, the ugly, he wants you to think that it's all God's fault and none of it had to do anything and that's the, the worst thing you can believe. Hello. Look at it. He went into the wilderness. He went into the devil's territory and guess what? He defeated him. Hello. He defeated him. But when does the devil attack you? In your ministry. Once God approves you and validates you, you're going to have a problem with the devil because you got anointing on your life that he don't like. Hello. And you're talking about some people don't like you? If you put your hand in God's hand, it's going to be a whole lot of people that don't like you. Hello. Hello. I, please understand that. And I'm not trying to be funny. Hello. I'm telling you just like it is. Been there, done that. And they, they even called Jesus Beelzebub, prince of the devils. Hello? That's what Beelzebub means. That's what they called him. Nothing further from the truth. People are always going to tell lies on you. And if they don't, guess what? You need to go back and examine who you serve. Hello? Hello? Talk to me if you can. I'm out of here. And there were in the wilderness, what? 40 days. He always attacks you at your weakest point. Hello? Tempted? Who did not say he was tempted by? Tempted by Satan, the adversary, the devil, the one we're talking about. The one that what? Once you get approved by God, he's the one that's going to be what? Trying to cause misery in your life. He come for three reasons. Kill, steal, and destroy. Talk to me. And Jesus told you to do what? Resist him. And how do you resist him? Hello? Don't listen to his lies. Hello? And then don't obey his voice. Listen to the Lord. 
Adam and Eve got in trouble listening to the devil. Hello. The wild beasts, they're symbolic of danger as well as being alone. You have to go through your temptation by yourself. There's nobody that can help you. Nobody can help you. Some things, what? God don't allow people to help you get through. You have to do them on your own. And what kind of help did he have? He had what? Spiritual help. The angelic world. What kind of help do you have? Spiritual help. The angelic world. The Holy Ghost. Amen. That's who you have to help and support you. Hey, when you go through your tribulation, trials, difficulties, and hardships. And if you are successful in fulfilling your assignment, look what Jesus, he was successful. But look what he had to go through. He had to die on the cross. Hello. And the beating and the thorns and, and, the, and then the cat of nine tail. Look at all he had to go through. And you whine and cause somebody don't speak to you. Come on now. You got to stand up, hello, and trust God to take care of you. We went all the way back to the beginning and looked at it. This is how the gospel got started. It hasn't changed. God bless you. I love you. My time is up. Amen. And I thank you for yours. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you, Lord, for pulling the curtains back and allowing us to see how the gospel of Jesus Christ got started. And it wasn't a pretty picture. The difficulties and the hardships that Jesus himself had to go through. But you approved of him and you supported him and you gave him the anointing that he needed to fulfill his mission. And Lord, you gave us the anointing we need to fulfill our ministry. Help us. In Jesus' name, amen.